today I just wanted to make a video about the uh, some of the uh, movies I've gotten uh, this summer um, there's a good number of criteria movies but um, first I'm gonna talk to you about the first couple <coughs> of movies that I got uh, in May um, really and the first is The Batman. And um, I've already made a video about this. I enjoy it very well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a very good movie. I enjoy it. I think it was very well made. Um, I did have some critiques. Obviously, I made a video <coughs> after I saw the movie. And so... From there, you know, uh, overall, those little critiques I have, like primarily with the writing, are a bit, are still there, you know, but overall, very good film. Robert Pattinson's performance is very good. Uh, you know, no real complaints there. Um, just a very good movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Next, I got, um, <clears throat> like for my birthday, um, UHF, um, the 25th Anniversary uh, Shout Factory Edition. And I also, right here, I have the DVD. Um, still have that. All the special features from here are here. Plus, it has a retrospective uh, panel from San Diego Com uh, Comic Con. Um, this says uh, Easter eggs, however, there are no Easter eggs. Um, <clears throat> on here, there are Easter eggs. And this is one of those DVDs where you got to flip the disc over. Um, and so on the discs, you know, or on the disc, you know, there's some Easter eggs here and there. Um, very cool. Yeah, and there's a reversible cover, too. So here's the front cover. And then the... Uh, just uh, like a screen. Or like a, one of those screens on TVs when they... Uh, technical difficulties or whatever and uh, the alternative cover is just the DVD cover really and so since I still have the DVD I think you know why you change it to this I'll just <laughs> keep it like that and also uh, you know Michael Richards and Frank Drescher are not here uh, but I like this one it's just really cool um, so I'll keep it like that, um, like this, and um, Jet Factory does a great job, as does Criterion. Um, they have uh, excellent uh, releases, and um, this is a great release. I might talk about this um, movie in the near future, perhaps, um, as well as some of the other stuff I've gotten um, that I haven't talked about yet, so you know, I think I've got a good amount of stuff to discuss, honestly. Um, and the last uh, movie I got in May, which was also like a like a day or so where I get a good percentage off of stuff, um, Criterion, or a certain amount of time could end um, around the time that this came out, so I got um, <clears throat> And this is the first of the Criterion movies I'm going to talk about um, here. The first is a Double Indemnity, um, film noir, directed by Billy Wilder, starring Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck and George uh, Edward G. Robinson. Um, very good film. Seen this uh, various times before. 
on TCM and stuff of that uh, sort. Very good film. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's really good. Um, great film noir. Um, truly incredible. Um, <clears throat> I think from beginning to end. Um, very fascinating film. And uh, yeah, this of course has the uh, 4K uh, disc, which is behind the uh, little uh, uh, not necessarily a booklet because you know it's it has like the essay and about the restoration and all that stuff here. And it's really interesting how Criterion does this, but I do wish kind of that they uh, would have the little like thing in the middle for the disc, like one and two, and then there you go. But I guess this is how they want to do it. And so here is the 4K disc. Um, and the Blu-rays are just, you know, double indemnity. So nothing real special uh, artwork or image imagery to really speak of. So, um, I've seen that 4K is now like down in price, I guess. They're becoming a thing. You know, Blu-ray is basically now the standard uh, for uh, home video. And because, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's high definition, so that does make sense. Um, DVDs I, uh, are still a thing. Um, I don't know if they will ever go away in the near future, at least. But it's interesting how one would think that with home video and stuff, DVDs would be gone now. You know, not that people have gotten rid of their DVDs, like all of them, especially since some of them can only get on DVDs, haven't gone to Blu-ray or now 4K, or some aren't even streaming. But, yeah, this is, um, <clears throat> uh, it's interesting how, as time has changed, you know, with home video, you know, 4K is now more, uh, I guess, a little reasonably priced in the sense that more people are getting 4K Blu-ray players, um, so that's always cool. And so for the next, uh, the last uh, batch of movies I got, um, it's what I've gotten this month through the 50% off uh, Criterion sale of Barnes & Noble. And I never really get a huge amount of movies. Um, uh, it might be a bit of a downer, but you know, sometimes you, you, know, you don't have a whole lot of money or something to <coughs> spend or something, you know don't want to go and just spend it all on a lot of things and there's a lot of stuff that Criterion has that I would like to have but it's like sometimes you gotta if you're gonna buy something like splurge a bit you gotta really pick and choose what you really want for like a sale like that especially and so this first um, one was a film, a film that my uh, YouTube uh, YouTuber, um, 1951, like, uh, Gray Media, um, his name's Mike, and he, uh, uh some time ago to, talked about this movie, and, um, uh, I have seen what the remake is, it's a re, it was remade by William Friedkin, starring, uh, Roy Scheider's The Sorcerer, and I have I actually forgot that, uh, that that was a remake, and so I really enjoy that movie, though that's fairly underrated. And so I thought I'd get the original, uh, and that film is uh, The Wages of Fear. And um, as it says here, basically on the back, that, um, <clears throat> and not just on the back, but from other people, essentially, uh, Henry George Clouseau. Uh, Horrible a pronunciation, I know, but, you know, 
the man is French, but he's basically seen as the French Hitchcock, you know, with the suspense and thrills and all that stuff. And um, I actually have not watched this yet as of now, but just because remembering the sorcerer and how that movie was and just how much tension was in there, I want to make sure I... Uh, <clears throat> I'm definitely in the mindset for a movie like this because I wouldn't want to <laughs> just watch it when I'm not prepared for something like this because, you know, sometimes stuff like that can be fairly intense and so it's like you got to uh, uh, brace yourself a bit. Um, uh, but this seems like a, a really good film. Um, uh, and considering how good The Sorcerer is, um, I really like this film. Or I should, I will probably like this film. Uh, you know, I think that would be a good sign. Like the material already was probably really good, so the American adaptation of it is uh, will probably be. You know, if that was good, the original has, is probably, you know, just as good if not better. Um, so of course this is French with English subtitles. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed some people wondering like why do some people like certain places like America or wherever they don't like films with subtitles you know where the whole film you basically have to read what's being said and um, I can only speak from those who I've talked to about this and it seems like the reason is when you have you know, subtitles being said in addition to you know watching what's going on people you know, they find themselves having to either pay attention to like the bottom of the screen to read what's being said and uh, as a result might miss something important that's going on screen in addition of being I mean, talking you know they might be doing something that's important to note or important in the moment and so if you're focused on the bottom of the screen and you are, are reading what's being said it's kind of like you know that kind of like missing things and then, but then again of course if you just watch what's going on and don't bother to really pay much attention to the bottom of the screen you're going to be kind of you know lost as to you, you'll know what's going on on screen what's being said but maybe certain things that's important that's being said that because you're not paying attention to what's uh being discussed or being said um uh the actions that you see may not completely register and vice versa of course so that's i don't know that seems to be the thing but i've noticed from people like they don't necessarily they, they want to be able to watch a movie and never have to focus on like i guess too many things like that's like like too many things that are important they want to be able to hear what's being said without having to just read what's on the bottom of the screen to understand everything that's going on because what's going on on screen also with the characters will be like just as if not even perhaps more so important than you know depending on what's going on in the movie as to what's being said so that seems to be a thing that um that, that i've heard you know of course that's only the those i've talked to interact with so you know Maybe that might be a common thing for some people also throughout the world or wherever. Or there could be other reasons. Some people might just not like foreign films for whatever reason. Like, it has nothing to do with that they can't understand what they're saying and have to read. It could just be like they're just, they just don't like them for whatever reason. I don't know. But, um, I have yet to, I have never had a problem watching foreign films with subtitles. Don't know how or why that is, um, and I never question it because I know for the fact that if the very second I seriously question it, I will probably not be able to understand or or be able to watch foreign films the way I have been watching them properly again. You know, I've watched the four Kira Kurosawa films. I've gone from the Criterion Collection. Never had a problem. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, paying attention to the uh, what's being said and then what's going on at, at all at the same time. I've never had a problem with that. Um, 
I'm happy I have him. Same with like eight and a half and um, I believe I might have another film though that I just can't recall off the off top. But I don't have too many foreign films. But this is one that's like French. I definitely don't have a French film. Um, I do have oh I have a vampire that a, a German film. That was the other main one I've got. There was a whole lot of dialogue from what I recall, so it was, that one was very easy to follow. You know, that you didn't have to just, it wasn't one of those where that kind of situation I just described could be a problem. I mean, there's a lot of atmosphere in that film, but I look forward to seeing this film. This is one that uh, I'll probably like, and um, yeah, and hopefully by the time I actually watch this or this video is up I have seen this I hope so um, <clears throat> and um, the next film because he passed away I decided I had to get this and this is Thief with James Caan um, a Michael Mann movie um, who of course is I think if anything best known for films like Heat these days um, Collateral is excellent uh, Public Enemies is excellent um um, created Miami Vice, I believe, or at least was he produced it. I believe yeah, he did that, and um, he also uh, made uh, Manhunter, the first film with Hannibal Lecter. Um, I mean, he's done a lot, but this is one that that's just really excellent. I think is in many ways an underrated film. James Caan does his best incredible as he really always is always was and you know he passed away this you know, month and that was a real bummer um, but you know he he was incredible he was an incredible actor from all the films he has done and um, I thought you know I, I'm just gonna get this because uh, I just like I wanted to see it because I really hadn't seen it before um, I'd seen parts of it but never the whole thing and so what I knew of it was very little I knew James Conn was a thief and that was it <laughs> you know and, uh, James Belushi um, you know, uh, Jim Belushi you know he, he's in this film and Tuesday Weld and Robert Broxky and uh, Willie Nelson um, very good film. Um, I'm glad I got this. You know, rest in peace to James Caan. Okay, and um, this is one that I was always going to get, no matter what. This in the next film. But um, I really enjoy this film. This is really awesome. Shaft. Uh, that, that This is an excellent film. Excellent, uh, uh, you know, uh, along to the black exploitation era and kind of bad and bad action hero. It's really excellent film. You know, uh, you know, Richard Roundtree is excellent. You know, I mean, it's you know, it, it's Shaft. That's what more can you really say? It's Shaft. Um, and this film, this also said, it also has the. Uh, this first sequel, Shaft's Big Score, which is really cool. I, I don't think I really knew that, or if I did, I it just kind of like, I was so in awe that Shaft is going to be in the Criterion Collection, be able to be in 4K also. And of course, here's like the, another one of those like essay things that folds out. And, you know, here is the 4K version, here's the Blu ray disc. But then like, disc two has like, Shaft, the big score. So that's really cool um, that they gave the sequel its own disc. Um, sometimes it doesn't always happen. Um, but I'm glad uh, I don't know, I'm glad this did. I have a um, Stanley Kubrick film. Um, I think The Killing is what it was. Yeah, The Killing. And it had a previous film that of his 
on that disc as like a bonus so that was really cool um, but I didn't have it on a second disc but this is really cool that you know we got you got two movies and you know the fact that it's 4k um, you know look, looks excellent too um, so yeah um, shaft what, what more can you really say um, Isaac Hayes is excellent uh, score and song his, uh, his Academy Award winning song became the first you know he, he was a black uh, person to win an Academy Award for a non-acting uh, category you know for music so that's really cool and, you know and fairly significant I would say and um, the final movie that I got which I was also always going to get this month because it came out uh, is a uh, raging bull Martin Scorsese film and I have the 30th anniversary right here on blu-ray and DVD and I'm gonna definitely keep this because there's certain features on here that I found not to be here like De Niro versus LaMotta like a shot-by-shot -shot comparison of the like De Niro as Jake LaMotta and the real Jake LaMotta in the ring I guess there was something with um, uh, I guess, you know, um, <clears throat> some rights issues or something with that. Um, I believe also, um, uh, La Mata defends the title of ancient, uh, newsreel footage. I don't recall that being on here, nor does it say so here. Um, but, you know, uh, overall, most, most of the other stuff are from here, are on here, so, like special features and all that, though, so that's really cool. Um, I was a bit surprised that this did not have, like, its own, like, cool, like, case, like, um, the Irishman here. I don't know why, but I kind of thought this would have a something like this where uh, well, the Irishman isn't the <laughs> easiest to come out. Though that's kind of good, you know. I guess I thought it was going to be like this, you know, something like that. And um, I don't know why. I, I just did. Something like that, where you then put the um, the booklet or essay stuff. It's not a deal breaker, of course. You know, the film looks great. And, um, works and everything. And, you know, that's what's important, really. Um, special features and everything works. And, uh, yeah, I just, I love this film. Um, of black and, the uh, 4K of the, and then being red. black and white this uh, yeah, the opening of the film with the credits and um, just so you get to look at the uh, the inside Jake Lamotta getting his uh, with his robe, you know, putting it on, and he, of course, also in that little thing, he then takes it off and throws it to the crowd. Um, <clears throat> so, that is really all I've got to say <laughs> about this, you know, I, I 
enjoyed and liked uh, all these films, all these films, except for, of course, Wages of Fear, which I will watch in the near future. Hopefully, uh, sometime after I make this video, you know, maybe like the next day or so. And so, hopefully in a comment or something I can say that if I, what I thought about it, whether I liked it or what, what not. Um, but, you know, that's really all I've got to say this time around. This is sort of like an update, Criterion update, along with uh, the Batman and UHF. Um, you know, a lot of excellent films, though many have gotten way more than me, so, you know, that's... <clears throat> That's all fine. Um, I guess if there's anything else, I will uh, say also, you know, here's the, the book and paperback. Um, I will say, um, this part, I have changed it so it's up here. So I think it has to do with the formatting because I was able to format it to where it primarily fits on the page a lot easier like the text isn't as small compared to the my other book you know Wandering Shira um you know uh, so by the time you see this that should all be fixed but yeah I uh just wanted to let you all know Get this uh, paperback, of course, an ebook in hardcover, uh, your choosing. But yeah, with that, I uh, hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day, great week, um, or had a great week. Hope your day is great and the weekend. I hope this weekend will be great for you also. Summer is almost over, and that's a bit of a bummer, um, but, you know, I guess if there's anything, at least it won't be so humid around here, so that'll be nice, but of course, you know, it's always nice to go out when it's nice and sunny and all that good stuff, but um, I hope all of you are doing well, and uh, take care. See you all next time. Bye.